In a forsaken valley, incarcerated by an oppressive regime, you find new friends and defeat old rivals to break free of your chains. Das Tal. A PvP-driven sandbox MMORPG with open PvP, full loot, and limited grind. Where the players pick each server's rules, battle over crafting resources, and build and besiege player settlements. With free character development and skill-based combat. Das Tal. Public Alpha available soon. Ish. Welcome to a video in which I will be discussing many different aspects of our game Dust Tal. Being a sandbox MMORPG, the world of Dust Tal is rooted in player interaction, both friendly and hostile, and players will assist and impede each other as they build their own character's strength. The world will be very free of restrictions, no quest lines or level requirements for certain zones. Players will enter the world and choose their own path. Dust Tal is full loot and open PvP which means that players can choose to attack each other at any point and take what others have for their own. Dust Tal will have no safe zones and no NPCs enforcing laws or rules. Instead we plan to introduce certain incentives that will make the shoot first, ask questions later mentality very risky in most situations, and will make cooperation or at least civility very much an option between players. Dust Tal will not be one world carrying on continuously. Instead, each server will have a lifetime, somewhat like a story with a beginning and an end. Players will enter the world, fight and strive to become strong, and then face a final challenge, before the server ends forever and they move to a new world of Dust Tal to face new challenges. One thing that makes these time box servers possible is the removal of the mass grinding that takes place in typical MMOs. In these games, players arduously make their way towards the end game, and then when they reach it, their reward is that their character is at the peak of strength, and they have access to elaborate endgame content. The gameplay of Dust Tal is instead a fast-paced mix of combat, area defense, diplomacy, and economics, all focused on strengthening your character and allies, and sabotaging your enemies. With such rich gameplay, the journey is the reward itself, and the end of the server is merely the end of one story and the start of another, not the loss of a huge amount of time spent doing meaningless tasks. XP gains will have capped earnings, with only a certain amount of experience able to be earned each day. 
This combination of limited XP, removal of large amounts of grinding and time box worlds creates a very different player experience to what a lot of people are used to in MMOs. I did two videos focusing on these features specifically which you will find in the media section of our website. Please check them out if you have any worries about the way these are being designed, as we have very good reasons for doing things this way. Settlements will play an important role in players claiming and defending land, as well as offering important facilities such as storage, training and respawn points. Players will restore ruins that they discover around the landscape using resources they have gathered, and gradually build them up to be their prime defensive position. Settlements will be vulnerable to attack and can be stolen by enemies if the owners are defeated in siege. This siege settlement system will be a way for players and clans to fight over control of key areas and the valuable resources within them. Resource warfare itself will involve securing an area rich in a certain resource and defending it while that resource builds up in your inventory. The resources will then need to be taken from the area, leaving them vulnerable to theft from any enemies who want to take the rewards of your hard work for themselves. This type of resource gathering creates a far more intense and PvP driven situation rather than the mundane task of wandering around searching for small nodes for hours. Given that resource gathering is a hazardous activity and certain resources will be abundant in some areas and not in others, this creates an economy in which some factions will have need of resources they may not have access to. Trading between players and clans will be extremely important and when trading is not possible clans may find themselves at war in order to gain resources they desperately need from a group who are hoarding it for themselves. Resources will play an extremely important role in shifts in power, as a group without access to resources cannot craft or repair weapons and armor, and will find themselves at a disadvantage in battle. Combat is something that we want to do very differently to the typical MMO also, moving away from repetitive tab targeting and click to target abilities. All abilities, attacks and skills in Dust Tower will be free aimed or timed by the player, leaving their skill and accuracy to determine the outcome of battles. In combination with armor and weapons, we want skill to be the most important part of a player's arsenal. Low level characters will find it possible to band together and completely outplay a high level character who comes around looking for easy ganks, and a moderately geared player will find it easy to defend against a high level character if they are very skilled. Putting emphasis on tactical play and skill based combat rather than simply who has the better gear or higher level will create a fair and more enjoyable combat system for everyone. Character development is something that is important in an RPG, MMO or not, and it is something that we plan to leave very flexible. Players will be able to dabble in all sorts of weapons and armor proficiencies in one character, meaning that there is no need to create numerous alts with special skills. There will also be no traditional restrictions making sword wielders wear mail or mages wear robes. We leave that up to the players and they can try out combinations to see what suits their playstyle. Swapping from one weapon or armor type on a character will require simply some retraining and then they are free to level their proficiency in that new item. The world of Dust Tower does have a lot of story and lore that we've discussed, but we want to keep that very far away from restricting our players' characters from being bound to a set story. All the player characters in Dust Tower have been taken from their homeland and cast into an unforgiving valley, but who they were and what they did before they arrived is up to each player to decide. How Dust Tower continues to progress will be greatly influenced by those who join us and have their thoughts heard. We are making this game because it is something that we love, but it is also extremely important that we create something that people enjoy playing. So join us on our forums and tell us what you think about certain features, or maybe something you think is missing. Later in development, we plan to offer players the chance to vote on what they would like to see in the game first, and what ideas they like that have been suggested by their peers. This community influence will also determine rule sets for servers, as players will be able to vote on what types of servers they would like to play on. If you would like to know more about Dust Tell, head over to our website where we have a collection of videos, screenshots, an about section and an FAQ. Furthermore, you can ask questions directly on our forums, and we'd love to chat to you about the game. You can support our Steam concept page so that more people can see what we're doing and support Dust Tower. You'll find all the relevant links down below. My name's David Wells, and I'm Head of Communications for Fairytale Distillery, and thank you all for watching.